Hello everyone and welcome back to Communion. I'm just going to read from Luke 10 verse 38 to 42 and it says, Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, what, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. I love that story. But you know, we, we paint pictures when we read the Bible. We do it about Thomas. We call him Doubting Thomas. <laughs> Yet, really, Thomas was a very brave person. Here, Martha, we talk about Mary and Martha, and we talk about Mary as the one who sat at the feet of Jesus, listening to him like Jemima's just read, and we think of Martha as the one who's just in the kitchen doing all the work. But there's a phrase at the beginning of this that Jemima just read that says, Martha, it was Martha that invited Jesus into her home. And that's the expression I want you to think of today. What blessing was brought to their home at Bethany? In fact, it's looked on as the one place that Jesus went to before he went to the cross, the one place where he could go, he could be himself, he could relax. He was best friends with Mary, Martha and Lazarus. He could totally be himself there. And that was a blessing because she invited him into her home. And so today, as we share communion together, I want to invite the Lord into your home as you've done day after day. And the wonderful thing is, of course, he comes in and he shares with us and he stays with us. He dwells with us as we dwell with him. So we're going to break bread again today. Do you remember you've got the bread there? We're going to break bread. If you need to pause the video, you can do that and get ready to share with us. But day after day, we've been doing this and Jemima is going to read the, the verses that talk about this. So it's in Luke 22, verse 14 to 23. And it says, When the hour had come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, With fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. Wonderful. You know, we've done this day after day, and I guess we're knowing these scriptures now almost by heart. Kathy was saying that the other day in 1 Corinthians 11. We do know them because we say them so often, but they don't become familiar. Because in the Old Testament days, they did this from house to house. They did it daily. They just broke bread together, and it reminded them. It brought Jesus into their presence not that he was away with them it's a very difficult one to try and understand but there is something amazing that happens when we break bread that somehow in an extra special way jesus comes close to us so today let's break bread together we'll share jemima and i are sharing here with you and just remembering that jesus died for us and as i've said to you occasionally before even since i was a teenage boy a young lad i used to say before i take the bread recognizing that Jesus was broken for me, would I be willing to be broken for him? And when I can say yes, then I take the bread. So let's eat together if we're willing to be broken for him. Amen. After supper, he took the cup. Can you imagine Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane saying to his father, Father, take this cup away. Because in the cup was a saying yes to the will of God. For us, this cup means many, many things. It's, it's the cup that reminds us Jesus is going to come back again. It's a cup that reminds us that our sins are forgiven. But it gives us all that he is today. So I want to encourage you, let's drink his strength today as we remember the Lord. Let's drink together. Wonderful. I want to pray for you. 
We were hearing from Jordan the other day. He's doing very well now. So we thank God for that. I was asked yesterday for, to pray for a young five-year-old boy who went into hospital. It's called Tom in Northern Ireland. Uh, Doreen, just a friend of ours, sent that to us to pray for him. He needs a miracle. So can we pray for little Tom that God would do a miracle for him? I want also to pray for my friend Co over in Alabama that God will really bless him in hospital. He's having some checks today, that God would be with him and would give him strength. He was in hospital yesterday as well. So let's pray that God would give him strength. Father, we wanna lift each one into your presence. I pray especially, Lord, for little Tom, that you will do a miracle in his body in Jesus' name. We lift him into your presence. Let your angels minister to him and work on him and heal that little boy who's such a critical condition. I pray for Co that you will strengthen him in hospital in Montgomery and that you will bless him, protect him and bring him out rejoicing. And let, Lord, the results be clear. Let there be total health and healing for Co in Jesus' name. We thank you for what you're doing in Jordan. Continue to strengthen those legs and his back in Jesus' name. For each person with us today, around the world. God, I just pray that you will bless them, that you will encourage them, that you will strengthen them, that as we open up to collectively our homes to you, that we would, like Martha did, welcome you in gladly into our homes so that our homes will be places of the presence of the Lord. And so, Father, we thank you today for feeding us once again, and we commit ourselves to serving you in Jesus' name. Amen. So God bless you, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Ha, ha, ha.